You're still watching Ways. Now, today is International Day of Education, as proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly. It is a day set aside to honor education and its centrality to human well-being and sustainable development. Here's what caught our attention. That's it. <laughs> what do you think, ladies? Um, education, education, education. Yeah, education is vital. Just the way... percent in school and 6% not in school. That's in Ebony mm -hmm. State. And we have about 10.5 million Nigerian children. Five, five to, to, 14 to 14 years not in school. And that's like the, the most important age, age in their lives when yeah. they should be in school and have their mentality, you know, mm -hmm. framed. Considering how young our population is, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. um, distressing to know how much or how much of our youth mm -hmm. are not in schools. Absolutely. It may seem like it's not a problem, mm -hmm. but the reality of it is we're creating a problem for the future because they're gonna grow up. They're going to become citizens of this country. And what will they be able to deliver without education? What's our mm -hmm. education like truly in Nigeria? Um, the educational system. Well, should we, I, should I we talk about it? Ha. The fact that <laughs> we've now, we rely on private education because we don't have a public school system. Mm. Now, it seems like we don't have a problem when you say that, mm. that there's education or there's private education. So if I can afford private education, I feel like, oh, there's no problem. But even in our private schools, when you don't have a government, you know, there's oversight over public schools, but there's nobody measuring the standard across board mm -hmm. when it's a private school, mm -hmm. then you have a problem. Yeah. Because I can charge whatever I like, but who's looking at my standards? True. So without a public school system, that allows every single child. It should be, I mean, in other countries, it's unlawful for children not to go to school. Mm -hmm. So how, how are you able to then have a, a nation where children are not only not going to school, they don't have access to basic education, they can't read, they can't write. What future are we creating for ourselves? Hmm. Mm. That's so interesting. Well, hopefully, um, days like this will awaken, uh, will awaken our consciousness about what and what needs to be done in the educational sector. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. So, Uti, what did you find for us in the news? Um, so today, interestingly, I know everything we're talking about today is about birth, but when we um, started talking about education, I was looking at what else was in the news, and it's the federal government basically uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe again with ASU, and I mean, who grew up without university strike? Oh, actually, I did not experience it. I didn't it. experience strike for the four years I was in the university. You Me know too. why? Yes, the state governor decided to handle, because I went to a state you government school. State so the, the, the governor decided that he wanted to ensure that we don't go on strike for his eight years in office. Wow, wow. that's yes. amazing. That's amazing. Ibori. Amazing. Delta State University. So he well, was for me, ensuring that the lecturers were paid, mm. you know, steady. Yeah. Wow. For me, I went to Nam Jesuqua University, and as at the time, the four-year period I was in school, my school wasn't a part of a member of ASU. Absolutely. So, so you thank you, fine. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I was traumatized. My brother spent eight years in Lasso. Whoa. I was like the concept of actually having to buy a jam form for me was. My family, I told my sister, please just bundle me. <laughs> Put me on a plane before my mother can change her mind. Mm. It, it's so what's the story the, now? The, the, the story now is that the federal government is refusing to pay salaries to lecturers who are not registered on IPIS. So IPIS is their integrated personal and payroll information system. So it's essentially um, HR software that says this is how we want to pay. Mm. Now ASU comes and says, we're not paying. Mm. Excuse me, if we're you have an registry. employer. Mm. We are not registering, thank you. If we have an employer, and mm -hmm. your employer says, I want to pay you electronically, and then you wake up tomorrow and say, I want, I mean, So why, why do you think they are, they, are, they are trying to now, run away from this? Asu says, that. Asu mm. says, well, so this is what, you know, but Asu says that they, universities should have autonomy. So they've proposed a different um, system to the government, which is the University Transparency and Accountability System, which is fine, but if your, empl your employer has a right. You're employed by the federal government. The federal exactly. government is registered, so you register. Absolutely. But interestingly, if you're employed by the federal government, you're a civil servant, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't see themselves as civil servants, and that's where the disconnect is. So they believe that there should be some autonomy, there should be, and they, they're arguing to things like, oh, the system is not configured for them, mm -hmm. so it doesn't take into account things like sabbatical, it doesn't take into, so they're allowed to do um, adjunct, um, adjunct teaching in mm -hmm. other schools, up to five schools, mm -hmm. so it doesn't take in that into account. Well, we will, we will delve into the ASU matter deeply, very, uh, <laughs> maybe in the very near future. Because me, I know it's going to fight ghost talkers, but we need to move on to Sansa's story. What, what did you find Yeah, first? like education cases are 
are so complicated in Nigeria. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyway, moving on to health. Um, uh, coronavirus, it's trending right now. So far, two cases have been reported in the U.S. However, it started in China, uh, um, Wuhan city in China, back at the first case was January 9. So currently, there has been 830 cases of coronavirus and about uh, 26 deaths. Now, the interesting thing is that Chinese government has loaned uh, the city of Wuhan um, um, uh, $290 million dollars to build a 1,000 bed capacity hospital with 1,000 bedside uh, Please tell me the time, time frame again. So now, here is the interesting <laughs> thing. They are to do this within one week. So by this Monday, we're expecting to have that hospital set. And I saw Ready. videos and I saw tractors and bulldozers already Everywhere. working. Like it's such a busy <laughs> site. That, that just blew my mind. Nigeria, oh. And this is not the first time they're building a hospital in response to a crisis. Yeah. I, I mean, this is the stories you hear that lift your spirits. Your spirits. Mm -hmm. That and it is actually possible in this world. The response rate yeah. is amazing. Well, so my story is actually linked also to health. Um, the House of Reps is seeking to put restrictions on public um, office holders that practice um, seeking medical trips abroad. They're saying that, mm -hmm. first of all, they, they must go through... Um, I think they have to go through the, the Senate or something, get some form of approval before they can travel for medical trips and all of that. That mm. what they are trying to do is they want to see, I mean, have a, get, a, get to the point where our hospitals will begin to, you know, the, the upgrades that they need to happen will begin to happen in the hospitals. Because mm. if they put these restrictions, this ban on travels, for, for medical um, trips abroad. Medical tourism. Medical tourism and all of that. Definitely, people would definitely want to invest money to fix mm -hmm. the hospitals in Nigeria. Well, we're talking hospital today, so hopefully I'm sure that um, this medical tourism matter. Mm. Although I, I don't see it ending anytime soon. No, the soon. fact that, you know, there has been, um, w we are discussing about it yeah. in Nigeria. Yeah. I think it's good. And then the government has to go through a court process to travel for you. I mean, I think we're in a good place. It what, seems but, we're but in a good happens, place. So yeah. when you apply, are you applying to be given the leave for them to pay? Which part of it is it? Because if I can afford to go, mm. I will just go. So unless there is a benefit that, comes that the government it. will either pay for it or there's something, it makes no difference to me. So it, it, on, in the surf, on the surface of it, it sounds like I'm doing something, but mm -hmm. are you actually making a difference? So it'd be interesting because to Because most of the people that, that actually even travel abroad, it's their own personal funds that they use. Or are they telling us that they were using government funds before what? Uh, that's what we, that's why I said we, we need, need to, to dig, understand, uh, understand well. and mm. dig deeper into that. Well, we'll probably ask our guests. Maybe they have an idea of what, what the laws are. Uh, yeah. All right. So uh, Dr. Olamide Okunlaja joins us after the break as we discuss medical tourism. Please stay with us.